All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Questions for head coach Jay Johnson, please raise your hand. We'll start with Ari Kozlo. Obi Kozlo has quietly recorded a hit in all 10 games on the swing streak with multiple hits in seven of the games. Uh, obviously, he doesn't get all the you know the spotlights other hitters do, but what is it about him that makes him so consistent at the plate? Yeah, I don't think there's anybody that's been as big a part of our team's success this year as Kobe. Uh, he takes professional at bats. He's gotten a lot stronger in his time here. He's a great runner, uh, really hits mistakes well, battles with two strikes, manages the zone, and, you know, very classic Arizona hitter. Um, I think he's a very balanced attack, as I would call it, type player uh, with speed, uh, some power, solid hitting skills and really understands himself and understands what the team's looking for out of his at-bats, probably as good as anybody on our team and uh, has been a huge part of our success. Next question, Michael Lowe. Yeah, following up on that regarding Kobe, has he been everything that you expected him to be now that he's a starter or has he even maybe gone a little bit beyond what you thought he could do? You know, uh, interesting question. Um, I, I've always seen the talent relative to he's a good athlete. Um, he's very fast, quick twitch. I think he's really done a good job all to his credit of spending the last two to three years uh, for his benefit in terms of his development, you know, both mentally and physically. You know, when I say a player really knows our system uh, to the point that they probably could teach a lot of it. That's like the ultimate compliment. You know, I think uh, Kobe could run our offense, you know, in terms of what we want to do. He could uh, approach pitchers and tell the team, this is what we're going to do against a, a type of pitcher. Um, and really believe his knowledge of baseball is very strong. Uh, really believe his knowledge of himself and his self-awareness is incredibly high. And I think that led him to doing the things he needed to do to be the best player that he could be. I think we've seen glimpses of that uh, in his time here. Uh, he's had a couple of terrific summers. I do think if the 2020 season would have continued on, he would have played a lot more and a pivotal role in that team had uh, that year progressed. So in that regard, uh, not really surprised at all. Regarding TJ Nichols, who obviously uh, pitched really well last night, was there anything in particular that he worked on or that the coaches worked on with him over the last two weeks? And how big a deal is it if you can get him to be a consistent contributor for your team? I think a couple things. I think uh, physically he's at a place where he's feeling better. And I'm talking like body wise, nothing arm wise. Um, he got pretty sick. Uh, we had to send him home from a road trip, that's pretty, you know, pretty significant. Um, he had to overcome uh, some things internally. Uh, he lost some weight during that time. And I think really just getting his strength back uh, was not feeling well. And then, you know, had a couple tough outings against good offensive teams in our, in our league. And I think uh, that's probably the, the first time, uh, you know, somebody got the upper hand on him on a baseball field would be my guess. And so there's a learning curve that comes along with that. Uh, I had a good uh, meeting with him on Monday, uh, kind of told him how we were going to set up the game and what we were going to do. And uh, I thought he looked poised. He looked healthier uh, and really came after it. Like the first pitch he threw last night, it's like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of outs. Um, and he continued that for, for four and a third innings. I thought his mound presence was good. His demeanor was good. He threw his fastball exactly where he wanted it to. Um, almost all the time, off-speed pitches were good and uh, was, was dominating. And it is important for our team going forward. It's very important for our team going forward. Next question, Brian Peterson. What, uh, what can you tell us about Stanford um, in relation to maybe what you faced during this homestand? Is a significant increase in competition? I know you, uh, you say that every Pac-12 team is strong, but what, what's good about Stanford and why have they been successful this year? Yeah, a um, little tougher to comment on because we didn't, just like everybody else, Brian, we didn't get to play them last year. Mm -hmm. 
uh, my initial uh, look at them, uh, they have uh, power, like they, they can hit some, some extra base hits, uh, good athletes. Uh, they have a couple old players like us. Uh, Tim Tawa uh, has played a lot since he's been on campus. Christian Robinson has played a lot since he's been on campus. Uh, they have had a couple talented recruiting classes that they've brought in. Uh, you know, Brennan Beck has, has had a good career at Stanford. Um, so I think they're they're a blend, a blended team, kind of like us with with young talent and really good veteran players. And so it's going to be great. I mean, relative to anything or anybody else we've done, I, I haven't really thought much about that. Um, I, I know our players are excited. You know, I, I think setting the course for the weekend, it's two things for me. Number one, playing character, um, which you know, is with confidence, is with focus, is with respecting what it takes to win. And we have a blast. Like, this is fun. This is exactly where we want to be. And it's exactly who I want to be taking the field with. And I think those are the things that are important and the, and the things that we're going to do this weekend. Uh, you had mentioned earlier in the year when, when it was announced they, how they were going to be picking sites that merit is still a big part of it. And this will be the last chance to kind of uh, beef up the resume before they announced the, the initial 20. Um, do you, do you think that this is a, a key opportunity for that, that you need to kind of give that one last impression? I think it's the most important opportunity because it's the next opportunity. And I know that's boring um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, um, I think uh, we're really looking forward to playing. And uh, I think the fact that our players have handled every opportunity for the most part with great maturity uh, gives me great confidence about the readiness for this one and we'll prepare and and be excited and, and be focused on the game you know a pitch at a time an inning at a time and and do it with peace of mind so that it allows us the best opportunity to take advantage of all of that thank you next question back to michael you referenced uh stanford's ability to uh hit uh accumulate extra base hits they have the most home runs in the Pac-12, even though they've played the fewest games, what are the keys from a pitching standpoint to keeping the ball in the ballpark? Yeah, I think executing pitches. And uh, again, simplistic answer, you know, throwing strikes, throwing low strikes, uh, you know, commanding both sides of the plate, changing speeds, which our pitching staff does well. So I think the important thing is for our pitchers to prepare and to be themselves. And I think that will give them a great opportunity to be successful. When you look at your record this year, um, you know, you're six and five in true road games, uh, you know, four and oh at the at the Frisco Classic makes that number look a little bit better. But, you know, I know like in football, you know, I've heard coaches say stuff like you need to bring your defense and your running game in order to win on the road. Is there anything that you do or need to do differently when you know you're in a road situation to to win ball games than you would if you were at high Corbett. In years past, I would have said yes. In 2021, I would say no. I think uh, our team needs to be our team. As simple as that. Yep. Okay. Um, you guys are you know consensus top ten team. You know you're being projected to be a top eight seed in. These brackets, I mean, that stuff is, it's out there. You know, everyone's kind of aware of it. Is it hard to ignore that stuff? Do you encourage the players to ignore it? Do you encourage them to embrace it? How do you kind of treat that sort of yeah. chatter? Well, it's it's a heck of a lot better than people saying you stink and, and being 500. So it's a great thing. Um, relative to being in that position, it's because of the job the players have done and being consistent in their approach. And in that, in doing that, they're creating great opportunities for themselves like this weekend. And I think that's awesome. I think they think that's awesome. And it's a lot to be excited about and a lot of motivation to stay on the course. Are there any more questions for coach? Yeah, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, just the uh, the weekly question about Preston Price 
and his availability. What's the, is there an update? Yes, there is. We have had progress. Um, he is throwing. Uh, we are going to evaluate him today for his availability for this weekend, but we are in a lot better spot than we were at the outset of, of this break for him. And that's great for him. And it's, it's great for our team for sure, because we would love to have Preston back in the mix. Sure. In that same vein of the, the back end of the bullpen, uh, Vince Vanelli's looked really sharp his last couple outings. And, you know, two outings ago, he talked about working with the mental coach. Um, can you just sort of elaborate on like who that is and how you guys um, utilize that resource? Yeah. Uh, Carlene Pick is her name. Uh, she is great in her field. I have worked with her now with my teams for 15 or 16 years. Uh, she is, is uh, good at mental skills relative to baseball as there is out there. And there's some really good people out there. Uh, she does a great job of building a rapport with the players and uh, has been a very uh, useful resource for uh, teams that I've coached at San Diego, Nevada, and, and here. And she's, she's been with us the duration of the time at Arizona and uh, helps make an, a significant impact. And a lot of that stuff is, um, you know, between the players and, and her, you know, in terms of those kind of meetings, I think they could elaborate, you know, a little bit more. Uh, in Vince's case, I think he's been in, in total control of himself the last two outings. And I think, uh, you know, has, has had game control, whatever that means, uh, completely when he's been on the mound and uh, has pitched his best here recently, which has been great. And so we're excited about him and, and where he's headed. Sure. And one more um, injury question. Uh, Jacob Blass has kind of been in and out of the lineup here. What is his injury and how is it impacting his ability to do what you need him to do out there? Yeah, he's just he's not 100%, um, you know, available because he wants to play and available, uh, you know, given where we're at in the season. Uh, he's just limited on on some things he can do, you know, so, for you know, for the time being, we're going with Nick and we're going with Tony. Final call for questions for coach. All right. Thank you, coach. Garrett Irvin and Kobe Cotto are sitting over here and they're a lot more interesting than me. So have fun with those guys. Oh yeah, uh, quick schedule update. Uh, we are not playing Santa Clara on Monday. Um, the logistics of being able to play that game uh, really interfere with a lot of things. So uh, Coach Filter and I uh, mutually agreed that we are not gonna play the Santa Clara game. I'm actively seeking uh, a 56th game, uh, be it a midweek of the two midweeks we don't have midweek or potentially an additional game slash team the last weekend of the year. So it just, it's, a, it's just more of a logistical scheduling thing um, that, that is, just doesn't work the way that we had hoped that it would. Great, thank you coach. All right, questions for Garrett Irvin, please raise your hand. Let's start with Michael Love. How would you assess uh, the season that you've had so far? You personally? Um, well, to my standards, I'd say it's a little bit less than what I was expecting. But um, in the grand scheme of things, I think, you know, my arm was... I guess not in the best shape in the fall, just because um, of the shortened season last year. I think a lot of us were kind of frantically trying to put together a throwing program for that time. And I um, did not put together a well planned out one. And, but my arm is, is slowly coming along. And I think right now I, I feel amazing. So I think in that scheme of things, I'm happy with just the fact that I'm throwing and that I'm able to throw, you know, whichever day, even if it was out of the pen, I'd be, I'd be pumped to do that as well. So I think um, in that regard, I'm happy, but in my, you know, if you look at the stats and if I look at the stats, I'm not happy with, with that um, stuff at all. So 
but um, there's still, you know, weeks left and, and hopefully playoff time too to improve on that. So um, I'm excited for the next few weeks. What in particular in your statistical profile are you unhappy with? Um, I just think I've walked, I've walked way too many guys. And I think um, I'm not making good pitches later on in the count. And it's, it's really affecting, um, you know, how deep I go into games and how, how many runs, obviously I give up a game as well. So I just think I need to definitely get my walk total down and that'll, that'll pretty much help um, every other aspect of my pitching ability. So I know that Jay uh, preaches this idea that every opponent is the same. Every game has the same value, but is there a certain excitement level maybe for heading into a series at Stanford, a ranked opponent, you know, all that type of stuff? Um, I think in the back of our heads, it is exciting just because we are able to, um, you know, have an important game like this to play for, but um, you kind of notice with each week, it, it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really matter who we play. Um, I think, you know, certain times you'll, in the past on, on different teams, I would notice um, when, when we're expecting, you know, to play a higher cal caliber team and whatnot, but it just seems like this year, whoever we play, we kind of have the same um, weekly schedule and everyone's just level-headed. And I think we're all confident in ourselves that, um, yes, we are excited for this Stanford um, series just because it is important, but I think none of us are making it too important, so. Next question, Ari Kozlo. There being a lot of talk on social media about, you know, Arizona seeding and an upcoming tournament, how do you yourself and the team as a whole kind of uh, not focus on that and just focus on what you have uh, on the field? Um, I think, yeah, I think we're definitely grateful. It's kind of just an added bonus, especially because those rankings, um, whether they change or not, they usually change on Sunday or Monday. So it's, it's easy to focus on the week. And then, you know, if you, you know, end up sweeping like we have the last two weekends, you kind of um, come Sunday or Monday, it's kind of just an added bonus. It's, it's you're focused on the weekend, but then you're like, oh, sweet. You know, we moved up a little bit, but um, yeah, we're, we are just, we're excited for the next few weeks of, of Pac-12 play. And then um, we'll see where it goes from there, but everyone's pretty um, focused on, you know, this week and, and not in the future, so. Next question, Matt Moreno. Uh, when talking about the current winning streak, the, the hitters have talked a lot about the progress the pitchers have made and kind of giving you guys credit. Uh, how much growth has there been from you guys as a staff over these last few weeks? Um, yeah, a lot of growth. I think in the beginning of the season, it was our focus was obviously just limiting the walks. And I think we've improved that significantly. So I think uh, you kind of notice that we try to improve, you know, each week with something new because we, um, obviously our walk total is down, so we'll move to something else. And then, so, um, I think it, it definitely helps when we have confidence that our hitters are going to put up, you know, as many runs as they are right now. So it's, it just, I think we all took it to ourselves that if we just improve, then we're going to be a really good baseball team. So, um, yeah, we, I think we've improved a lot, definitely a lot since last year. And we, we've added a lot of important guys and, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, um, seeing, you know, all of our pitchers really come together and, and everyone's improving. It, it seems like if one guy improves, the next guy follows suit. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Next question back to Michael. Jay has referenced kind of the unselfish nature of this team. And I, I feel like it's been more of a focus on the lineup. You know, there's only nine spots in the lineup and there are more than nine starters and sort of how those guys are supporting one another. But in terms of the pitching staff, um, I feel like it's evident there too. Guys are playing different roles at different times. You just said you'd be willing to you know, pitch out of the pen. Is that how you've kind of seen the unselfishness within the pitching staff? Just that kind of like no matter what role these guys are given, they're willing to do it? Oh yeah, you see guys like um, Austin Smith and you know Riley Cooper got the start last night. Um, no one's really you know, itching to get a starting spot or pitch a certain amount of innings. You just see guys, um, everyone's just, it's, yeah, it's funny. Everyone's just cheering on their teammates. 
and then you'll have Jay um, say, oh, go get hot. And uh, they'll, yeah, they'll just go and they'll be in the game. So no one's really expecting anything um, just because they have trust um, with the guys on the mound and with themselves. So, yeah, you see guys like Chandler Murphy where, you know, he was obviously a starter and now he's like a key, a key um, member of our relieving right now. So it's everyone's just mixing and matching roles right now. And I think everyone's um, just content with just playing and, and, you know, being as good as we are right now. So it's a lot of fun. Stanford leads the Pac-12 in home runs. Uh, what is the key as a pitcher to keeping the ball in the ballpark? Um, I think it would just be the same mindset we've been playing with. I think obviously just keeping the ball down, um, just pitching like we've, we've been pitching in the past. I don't think anyone really needs to change anything, but um, yeah, I, I think just keeping the ball down and, and letting our defense work behind us. And I'm, I'm confident that we'll end up on top. So. Any more questions for Garrett? All right. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. Questions for Kobe Cotto, please raise your hand. We'll start with Ari Koslo. He recorded a hit in all 10 games on his winning streak. How have you been seeing the ball as of late? And obviously, you know, there's a lot of big hitters on this lineup that get talked a lot. Uh, do you kind of embrace kind of being that kind of unsung, you know, hitter in this lineup and how do you deal with that? Um, first off, I feel like I've been seeing the ball pretty well. Um, kind of just really focusing on seeing it foot down early, um, trying to slow the pitcher down a little bit just so it gives me more time to see the ball. Um, but on the other note, I just feel like any way I can contribute to help move the offense is what my goal is. Um, I'm not out there to try and chase hits or chase numbers. I'm out there to help the team win and help the team put up runs because at the end of the day, it's the whole team's effort to get a win in the column. So that's what I got on that. Next question, Michael Love. You waited and waited for your opportunity here, um, and it's finally come. How would you describe what the experience has been like to be a, a starter and a, and a key contributor to one of the top teams in the country? Uh, it's been surreal. I mean, I, I can't believe that um, it took the steps that I took to get here. It was it was really tough, but now that it's actually happening, I feel like I can play freely. I can kind of have fun playing with everyone on the field and being in the dugout laughing and having a good time. Practice is great. Um, just knowing that a lot of people are coming to me now for assistance in a way where I was in their shoes. So the roles are, have kind of flipped, but it's still just being a great teammate. You know, the you being in the starting lineup doesn't make you better than someone else on the team. It's it's a collective agreement that everyone here is working towards the same goal. And I'm going to do my best to help people that aren't in the lineup and also are in the lineup so we can all continue to get better, to get better. And I'll also take feedback from other people as well, just so I can continue to keep working. Jay has said that there are some guys on the team like you and Dante who've been around so long and have been so ingrained in the system that you conceivably could teach it or coach it, when you hear him say that, what, what does that mean to you? Uh, it feels good. Um, it, it really helps knowing that our coach has that much trust in us. Um, we've been here for a long time, so it is kind of ingrained in our mind, but it is also in our way the right way um, because we've been producing and it's been working so well for us. So we really believe it, we really back it. And if people on our team need help with it, like we're more than willing that to talk to them and to work with them in the cages and going on our free time to like work with other people just because we want everyone to be at their best. Next question, Matt Moreno. Uh, you just mentioned fun. Garrett Irvin just mentioned fun. Coach just mentioned fun. Uh, it feels like you guys are having fun against GCU. How much does that attitude, how does that attitude, I guess, translate to the field and how does that help you when you guys go through the course of the season? Uh, it helps a lot. Um, when the energy is high, the dugouts engage, people on the field are engaged. It just brings out a lot more energy and a lot more excitement within the team. And um, everyone that has fun playing the game is going to have a better chance of playing well. You know, it's hard to be in a bad mood when your team's having fun and we're all working hard. So the 
having fun, having good energy is a really big thing for us, especially in the dugout, providing energy for our pitchers and our hitters because um, energy is down, the game kind of drags along and that's when you kind of lose your edge. But when it's upbeat, up tempo, everyone's backing each other, you just know that you have your whole team behind you. You have a month left in the regular season. Has there been more of an emphasis on that lately? Yeah, um, we talk about it a lot. This, it's a long season. Every game's important. Um, and every single game, you got to bring more and more, especially when it gets later and later into the season. Bodies start to get tired. You know, minds start to get tired. But there's one thing that you can control, and that's your energy. So we, we fo really focus on bringing high energy every game to kind of get everyone going to help our team be successful in a way that we know we can. Next question, Ari Kozlow. With the tournament being right around the corner, how do you personally and the team as a whole kind of eliminate the noise of social media and focus on you know finishing the regular season strong on the field? Um, for us, we, we kind of just stick within our team. We stay within ourselves. We don't try to get too big. We focus on the task at hand and take it one game at a time. Um, we all know that social media is a big thing and it's going to be out there for everyone to see. But if we can just focus on what we have to do at that given moment, all that doesn't matter because we're going to be fulfilling what we need to do. Next question back to Michael. Is there, though, any added excitement level for a road series against a ranked team like Stanford? Um, not particularly. We try to treat every game the same. You know, it, we all know it's really hard to win on the road. Everyone knows that if they play college baseball or any sport, it's hard to win on the road, especially if it's a ranked team. But playing a ranked team or non-ranked team on the road is just as difficult. So we're going to go in there with the mindset as if it's another game at High Corbett or another game somewhere out in Texas. It's not your park. It's not your fans. But we still have our team, and that's the only thing that's going to matter. Sure. With, with the success that you've had um, this year, you've undoubtedly put yourself on the radar of MLB scouts. Is pro ball anything that you ever think about or have you allowed that to kind of creep into your mind at all this season? Um, I mean, as a kid, that's always been the dream. But as of right now, it's all about the season. It's all about putting a win in the column every single day, every week, weekend. So right now, I'm not really, I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm just thinking about improving myself, helping improve our team and helping us win ball games. Sure, we've asked a couple different guys about this, but this, this current streak started after that horrible game on that Friday um, at Washington State. Do you think something changed that night or the next morning that's kind of spur spurred this streak? Um, it was kind of like a cold shower, you know, you, you get in there, you get shocked a little bit and you're like, whoa, this actually happened. But everyone knows that this could happen to anyone. So we just have to know that we have to come ready to play every day. You know, things aren't always going to go our way. We might not always be in the win column, but there's still times where you can control what you can control. And that day we just we didn't come ready to play. So it was kind of a wake me up call and we got to show up to the field every day ready to play and doing whatever we can. Any more questions for Kobe? All right, thank you everyone. That's all we have for today.